Hello, everyone. Welcome. <laughs> I thought the phone was going to fall over when you hit record for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're trying it's a new... Days. If it seems like slightly higher up, we are kind of trying a new thing to hold up the phone. We'll see how it It's works. not as convoluted <laughs> as the first one, but also just as equally convoluted. Today is a video that we're very excited to bring to you, and it is uh, actually an idea from somebody in the comments. From one of you guys. So we always are asking what you guys want to see because we love to make the things that you guys want to see because it's you who are mm -hmm. consuming what we are putting out there. I just make it. We have a viewer named Jess. I do not know her username, but her name, she signed it at the bottom, dash Jess. And she requested that we do basically a reseller dictionary. How nice is so that? So this oh, is easy, going easy. to be a reseller dictionary slash reseller A to Z. So we don't have a word for every single letter, but at the same time, we have multiple words for some letters, mm -hmm. so it's not that specific. And it's kind of an alphabetical order just by the first letter of the word. Yes. Because who cares if it's in perfect alphabetical order? If you see something that we missed, please type it in the comments. Yes, I was going to say that. And then we can do part two later. We can do a part two because, I mean, we just tried to brainstorm this ourselves. Jess left us two or three words that I mm -hmm. used, but I would love to hear ones that you guys maybe hear frequently and you don't really know yes. or took you a while to kind of figure out what it was because we could do a part two that covers those. So these are words that you might be hearing from other resellers on YouTube, or you might be reading them on Instagram, or you might see them in listings on Poshmark. And you go, what? These are kind what of ones know? that have to do with trends. Some of them have mm -hmm. to do with condition. Some of them are kind of words that maybe we mainly use and other people might not as much. And then ones that have to do with like business of reselling. Business. So it's all kinds of the stuff business. and it's kind of an alphabetical order. And we are just gonna jump into it, switching off back and forth, telling you guys the words and their definitions uh, before we jump into that though if you're new here and you're interested in reselling stuff you're interested in hauls or more informative videos like this please hit the subscribe button and you won't miss out on any of them no. and if you're someone who has viewed us before or if you're that new person that i just talked to Thank please you. give us the thumbs up because we really really like that and That's if i'm lot. wearing the same shirt as last week i apologize <laughs> This is my evening shirt. You mean on Tuesday? Not even last week. No, just my evening shirt. His sleep period. shirt. We are going to hop into it now and I will start. The first word that we have is arbitrage. Arbitrage. So you will see this word come up a couple other times in the list. So I'm not going to be too specific with the kind of arbitrage I'm talking about. But basically what arbitrage is, is when you buy something that is marked lower than its market value or what you could get for it and you buy it and you sell it for what you could get for it or what the actual market value is. There's multiple kinds and we'll be more specific on that coming up here. Yeah. There's like retail, there's online, there's consignment, there's all different kinds. So we will get into that in a second. Number two is bins, comma, frequently called the Goodwill Wholesale. It is a buy the pound Goodwill store where you literally get big old bins of clothes or hard goods and you sift through them and pick out what you want and then you you weigh your card at the end and that's how you pay. Number three <laughs> is kind of a descriptive keyword and it is boho. Bar so boho <laughs> is a lot of like feathers, embroideries, tassels. It's short for bohemian. A mix of like western with like tribal. It's very flowy. It's a lot of the time very associated with like 1970s like hippie fashion. Very flowy, a lot of flowers, a lot of flowiness mm -hmm. to the garments. It's very like free Just people. Think free people yeah literally people. like it's very free people i'm sure a lot of you know boho so next is bolo not to be confused with a boho and bolo is be on the lookout so that's like if we said like oh this brand is a bolo and you're out doing your little shopping and you find it you find a bolo and what a bolo is is brands that you should be looking for yes. because they have value and they are mm -hmm. sought after and they're possibly trendy they're expensive they're mm -hmm. luxurious basically you're saying you should be on the lookout for, for said brands but expensive. also sometimes like a style is a bolo like mm -hmm. knit dresses could be a bolo this the season leather pants etc it's just something, something like that that you should be looking Something for. Something to keep your eyes off for. Bread and butter. Bread now, and we are not talking about no morning toast 
with butter or margarine. We are talking about bread and butter brands, or once again, this could be a certain like piece or category. Mm -hmm. So if something is my bread and butter, for example, I used to consider Under Armour logo shorts to be bread and butter. Mm -hmm. They are frequently found. They don't flip for a ton, but they flip easily. They flip fast and you can kind of count on them. That's Think what a, consistency. That's what a bread, bread and butter, butter is very consistent. Yes. Like a consistent $30 sale, a consistent, you know, $10, $15 sale. It's just easy money. A lot of people consider like American Eagle jeans to be bread and butter. Typically medium to low dollar flips that are very easily accessible and take hardly any time to list. Found frequently, sell fast. Next is bucket list. Not like the Morgan Freeman movie. Bucket list is like, oh, that's a bucket list item or oh, that's a bucket list brand. So when you're shopping or when you find something, you can like check it off your bucket list. Like for me, I want to find more Chanel in the bins. That's a bucket list find. A bucket list item is like, I want to find a Chanel boy bag in the bins. A bucket list, like basically kind of it's to each their own. Mm -hmm. So each person kind of has their own bucket list brands. It's usually like a brand you haven't found yet. So when you found it, you usually like make a post or you just kind of think to yourself, oh, off of my thrifting bucket list. Back in the day, Teeks and Rothy's bucket lists. BST or buy, sell, trade is our next word. And what that is, is like a Plato's Closet or Style Encore. Technically, a buy, sell, trade is different than a consignment store because mm -hmm. you go and you get money right away. A lot of people talk about BSTs because they like to shop at them. Mm -hmm. So buy, you can buy at them. You can get some really good deals usually. Sell, because you can usually bring your bins items or items that are old in your closet there to sell. Trade means that you probably sold the items there while buying items, so it's kind of like a trade. Next is cottage core. Cottage core is very closely associated with a boho, the bohemians. It's an idyllic style that typically has a lot of curry dresses, a lot of like neutral colors, think sage green, beige, terracotta. It's all about like the aesthetic of very flowy garments, typically linen or like a light cotton. It's more about the way that it presents itself versus like any brand that could be associated with it. So when somebody says like, oh, that's for cottage core, that means it's very, think of somebody that stereotypically would like live in a cottage, like in a fairy tale. A lot of micro florals, a lot of collars, mm -hmm. and really like think Christy Dawn, think Doan. It's that, very prairie style. Yeah, and that mm -hmm. one is really a keyword. So yes. if you find something, use that in your listing and it'll attract people who are searching for cottage core. Yeah. Another similar situation is Coconut Girl, and Ryan taught all of us this before <sighs> I even knew it was a thing. Coconut Girl. Just really think think like a Hawaiian <laughs> aesthetic. So this is a lot of like micro skirts or kind of like cropped tops, a lot of florals and a lot of think like, like early 2000s surfing, rip curl, billabong. Think of a lot of like California surfer or Hawaiian really is what coconut girl in is. like 2006. And again, that's probably like a keyword that you'd like to use in a listing that mm -hmm. fits the aesthetic. So our next one is COGS. Cost of goods sold. C-O-G-S. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. This is a bookkeeping term typically. So when I have all my spreadsheets that has my dates, my items, what I paid for it, my COG is cost of goods sold. The difference between your net profit and your gross profit, which mm -hmm. we will get into here in a in a little bit. This is me the next day editing. Ryan did not explain cost of goods sold right, so I had to cut his part out. I don't know why you didn't have the accountant explain cost of goods sold. So for a company, cost of goods sold is the cost of like production and manufacturing and stuff. It's like the cost of the materials along with the machines and energy and whatever to produce and sell the item. But for us as resellers, cost of goods sold is any expense that goes into acquiring the item. So it would be the price of the item along with the fee from the platform you're selling on. So it's just all the costs that go into getting that item sold and acquired. Up next is consignment and it's a lot like buy, sell, trade, but consignment is usually that you drop the item off and you don't get the money until it actually sells. So it goes into account typically when so you cash out. Resellers use this a lot if it's again sale inventory or bins mm -hmm. fines or sometimes people actually sell through consignment. So say you have a family friend or mm -hmm. someone in your life who wants you to sell something for them, they're basically putting that on consignment if you're going to give them a cut of it. Our next one is comps. 
Comps stands for comparables. So if you find an item at the thrift store or if you're at like TJ Maxx and you see something and you're like, hmm, I've never seen this before. Or if it's a brand you kind of recognize, but you're not quite sure if you should pay this much for it. A comp is when you do your research, you check comps. It's like free people, gold, sequin, whatever top. And you see that the exact same top has sold for 20 to $50. That's checking comps, checking comparables. That is a term that you're going to hear a lot from resellers. Sorry. It's good to know what comps mm -hmm. are. Yeah, comps are just say similar items or the exact same items similar sold items by that someone been else. sold. Yes. Mm -hmm. Some people say sold comps because they'll actually like filter to sold ones. Those are the important ones. Yeah. The one that you'll hear a lot as well and this is cross post. To cross post means that say that Poshmark is your main platform. Mm -hmm. To cross post the item that you have on Poshmark means that you're also going to post it to eBay or to Mercari or both after. There are cross posting services that can help you cross post like automatically. Mm -hmm. But yeah, cross Cross post can be done manually, automatically, but cross post just means that you're posting your items to multiple places. Next is a death pile. I think a lot of us do not like to have a death pile. It's also called a money pile. A money pile. Also That's the more money positive pile. term. Money pile. It. So a death pile or money pile is um, things that you have sourced that have not yet been photographed, listed, put away. It is money that you have sitting there that you have not put it up for sale yet. Stuff that you have waiting to be listed, basically. Next up is dark academia, and this is another one that's like a keyword slash an aesthetic. Dark academia, think like Harry Potter. It's like people that wear gray and dark brown and mm -hmm. usually wear glasses, and they dress kind of like, not like drab, like a nice word for drab. Like it's like dark browns, wool. Very neutral overcoats, etc. Minimalist. It's an aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And you like read books a lot. Like literally that's part of the mm -hmm. aesthetic. Like cottagecore has more to the aesthetic than just the look. Like they usually do things. There's too. activities associated yeah. with them. And mm -hmm. there also is light academia. That's not on here, but basically it's the same thing. Just turn the shades of what they you wear. You just make up. them look a little brighter. Mm -hmm. Next is deduction, parentheses, taxes. Parentheses, everybody's best friend. If you are packaging up items and you go out and you buy tape, that is That's a tax, a tax deduction. deduction. So, it's anything involving directly related to your business. Anything you're buying specifically for your business yes. is a tax deduction. Remember to take them off. It can help you a lot in the long run. Next is fees. So every single platform and website has different fees. And what we're really talking about mm -hmm. here is the percent that Poshmark or eBay or Mercari takes from your sale price since you are using their platform. Mm -hmm. You owe them some money. You use their website. It's not your website. That's the fee. That's kind of what we're talking about here. Going off of fees, we have flip. So if I, the, they just start the same letter and I don't want to say next again. Flips are, if I go to Goodwill and buy something for $4 and then sell it to somebody for 25 that's a flip. And then you keep the rest. Reselling is flipping. Flipping. It's kind of just a synonym. Up next, it seems like I'm getting all the words that were meant for Ryan. Up next is girlies. The girlies. I'll just the let girlies. Ryan explain. The girlies are a, a very, very, very trendy group of typically, they start at like young high school, think like freshman year up to college. They are very trend oriented. They are very brand conscious. A lot of the things they wear are, they sell very fast and you can find them a lot because the trends change so quick. It is a group of people that is very oh, commodified. Yeah. Yes. And it's very easy to sell things to them because they change a lot. Girlies is kind of one of those ones where I said in the beginning, there's some terms that maybe we use. I think I made it up. And not everybody That's uses. okay. I'll do the next one since Ryan took that one from me. So the next one is gross profit. Now your gross profit is literally what the item sells for. You're not counting mm -hmm. the fees. You're not counting the cost of goods. You're not counting what you paid. You're not counting anything. That is your gross. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Next is Google Pile. So this one is a little more specific to when you are out thrifting, like in a traditional thrift store or at the bins. It is a pile of things that you need to Google that you don't necessarily know the brand or you would like to check comps on those items. That is your Google Pile. I put mine in the children's basket in the cart. Next up is Holy Grail. So this is a lot like bucket list, but this is stuff that is probably on your bucket list that you really never assumed you'd find. Mm -hmm. So say that on my bucket list, I have a Chanel tweed jacket. I really don't think I'll ever find one at the thrift store. Yeah, so know. if I do and I make a post about it, I'll probably say, look at my Holy Grail find. It's just a find that like blows your mind 
Absolutely never expected to find it. Keywords is our next item. Can you tell that I'm trying not to be like, I next know. is our next word. Keywords are things you put in your listing title or in your description that can attract more people. So things like cottage core, dark academia, coconut girl. These are all keywords that attract the audience that you probably think is going to buy that item. And keywords don't have to be an aesthetic. They can no. be a season. They can be like a description, like an red, adjective. Knit, like, is, it, is thermal, chunky an adjective? Yeah. <gasps> Next up is lag and look. Lag and look, I don't have like the best explanation but for. But it's a keyword. But basically, yeah, lag and look's another one of the ones that's more like an aesthetic and a keyword. Mm -hmm. It is more like drapey, linen, more toned down, Earthy not businessy, more like relaxed fitting clothes. They're airy, they're flowy, they're oversized, they're usually like army greens, pea green, tan. A little bit more conservative in the color palette, like a yeah. little darker. You never yeah. find Conservative crazy. in color, but relaxed in fit. But not conservative at all in cut. Mm -hmm. Think Eileen Fisher, think Magnolia Pearl, think... Mm -hmm. Oh my gauze. Oh my gauze, that type that of stuff. Kind of stuff. Next is net profit. So this is the profit after all of the fees have been taken out. This is the money that after the Poshmark fee and after what you paid for it is going into your pocket. Mm -hmm. So everyone can brag about gross profit. But, but that net profit, net profit really is what it. matters. Net, your gross can be as high as you want, but your net can be But you could have paid... Hundred thousand dollars that item sold for hundred thousand one. That wasn't angle. <laughs> Next up is <laughs> NWT or NWOT. This is often used in titles. It's actually better not to if you look at algorithms and stuff. But NWT is new with tag and NWOT is new without tag. So obviously that means that it's like new, seems to have never been worn, but the tag is just no longer attached. People use them in descriptions or titles, but maybe don't. Next is no low, which if you remember is the opposite of bolo. No low is not on the lookout. So this is a brand or an item or a style that is not trendy, that is not selling, that is just not worth picking up. Literal exact opposite of bolo. Usually it's like outdated. Usually you say something's a no low because maybe it used to be a bolo. Mm -hmm. At one or... point it was trendy or like the brand was really popular and now it is absolutely not. Online arbitrage is our next one and this is one of the arbitrage family but this is when you are shopping online say on eBay or on Poshmark or like Nordstromark.com or something like that and again you're buying something that is definitely underpriced. Usually if it's on Posh or eBay it's because like the person has bad pictures, mm -hmm. they're a amateur seller or, or something. not a reseller. Yeah or not mm -hmm. a reseller or it's their personal thing and yeah so they underprice it or it's just not selling for them and you know its value maybe you know its style and know that it's newer and so you buy it and you resell it yourself mm -hmm. next is palette so a palette typically when you buy palettes they're a very expensive B, they come on a literal wood palette and they are usually just like full of clothes and typically they're by weight so instead of like you pay for each item in the palette you pay this one weighs a thousand pounds it's X amount of dollars per pound here. Um, Palettes often have manifests. Yeah, the profit margin is usually slimmer. You're usually paying a lot of money for a lot of things, but the profit margins are just a lot slimmer. Mm -hmm. And they're usually for like much more advanced resellers. Like I have, even I have no interest in buying a palette. I want to buy one when I got a house, not but not right now. I have no interest. I like the source. And that's coming up. <laughs> Next up is pilling. And I have heard people say piling, but I think it's pilling. I think it's pilling. Pilling too. is the effect on a sweater where it looks like it has little kind of bobbles all over it from wear. So from it didn't, friction. didn't come that way factory. And usually you have to use a sweater shaver to get them off. Pulling is when somebody's like, oh, I have to go pull inventory. You are getting it out of a system. So you literally go like, pull it out of a bin, pull it out of a closet, pull it out of a bag. Like you physically pull and get all your stuff ready to ship. In a sentence, it's usually like, I have to go pull my stuff to ship. I have to go pull inventory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Paying up is when a reseller, well, everyone has kind of their own level that they consider paying up. Mm -hmm. Paying up really means that like you're paying a lot more than say like thrift prices mm -hmm. or bins prices for an item because you see it has a lot of value and you like more believe in it. So you're willing to pay up for it because it's still a good deal, even though it's more expensive. Profit margin is basically what it sounds like. It is how much money you anticipate you are going to make, or when you're going to do your books, how much money you actually ended up making. 
packaging compared to how much you paid for it. So if I paid $50 for something and I sold it for $200, my profit margin is $150. Rescue box is something that is more specifically from Thread Up, even though some mystery boxes can kind of be rescue boxes in themselves. But a rescue box is from, again, Thread Up, and it's items that are damaged or just need a little bit of work or something to them. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a mystery box that comes randomly you don't know what's going to come in it and you pay for the box and you see what you get and you sell it or it might have to just be redonated or trash you just kind of got to get rid of it so the last of our arbitrages is retail arbitrage retail arbitrage is when you go to a place like nordstrom rack tj maxx any traditional retail store find something on clearance tj maxx you might find something that's mismarked and you buy it with the intent to sell it run is our next word and we don't mean I'm not Sprinting. running. I'm not running anywhere. No <laughs> running way. is in oftentimes silk. I think it can be in like viscose and stuff, but it's mainly mm -hmm. in silk. And a run is those little like lines that you see going through. Really, it's because like one line of it was pulled. It's a thread got pulled. But mm -hmm. sometimes there's like four in a row, and it just kind of looks like a little like. Let's take a little cat scratch. <laughs> Single stitch is our next one. This is also something that has to deal with the kind of clothing. Single stitch is very applicable to vintage t-shirts made before, I'm going to say like the early 90s. A single stitch is when you look at a new modern garment, there's two little stitches on each border. And a single stitch only has one that goes all the way around. It's just like how they made them back in the day. And it typically signifies A, value, and B, age. Sourcing is just what us resellers call uh, thrifting. For other people, yeah. they call it shopping. We call it sourcing. sourcing. So it sounds like we're doing work. <laughs> Stock photos are model photos. So if you find an item that doesn't hang super well or just looks a little funky on the hanger, you can use a stock photo with a person in it to show how it would be worn or how it looks. And stock photo is usually like the photo that Nordstrom Rack used or the photo from Free Yes, from the original it is kind of controversial little, it's a point of contention because like there is a little risk some companies will have like your listing taken down and some people are totally against using them some people love to use them but it's totally <laughs> up to you us. totally up to you Personal spandex us. waves is next and that is another form of wear so spandex waves also known as rippling is that mm -hmm. little bit of ripple that's in between the legs of jeans. And it doesn't always have to be there. It just means that that area has been stretched out and then washed. Yes. That's what happens. That's when there's a lot of elastic and the person wearing them stretch them either by like taking a long step or just stretching them naturally. And then, yeah, they're washed and dried and there you go. Yep. It's like when a wool sweater shrinks. Next is style name slash style number. These are very handy when looking up stock photos. Typically on an item, it's on the interior tag and it's a style and it's a bunch of random numbers and a bunch of random letters. And you can plug that into Google and then you will generate a stock photo. A lot of brands Typically. have them like mm -hmm. Theory, J. Crew, Madewell, Lily Plitzer, and Allison many others. Olivia. I know. Trend or trendy is our next one. And I feel like we all know what this is. A trend or something that is trendy is just something that's very popular popular right now like mini micro bags are very trendy right mm -hmm. now you can put trendy in the description kind of as a keyword because some people literally do look up like trendy bag when they're shopping on posh yes, so it do. doesn't hurt to put it in there no witchy core is our next item the last of the cores this is one that was invented by monsieur <laughs> jacques typically using a bell sleeves a lace a lot of black Think of, like, a very elevated witch's Halloween costume that you can wear yes. all the time. As the creator of witchy core, I'll tell you kind of what it is. From the horse's mouth. It's not... Thanks. Well... It's not necessarily <laughs> Halloween. I mean, like, obviously, like, in a way it kind of is. But it's just, think, like, modern, everyday witchiness. So, black pointed toe, heels or boots, like, black lace bell sleeves. Just think Stevie Nicks. That's very kinda, Stevie Nicks kind of what I'm thinking with witchy core here. Next up is wholesale. And I think isn't buying a palette is technically considered like wholesale shopping? Yes. Or if you're a boutique seller. Yes. So wholesale, like Poshmark actually has their own like way that you can buy wholesale. And really what that is, is you're directly buying massive quantities from the manufacturer to mm -hmm. sell yourself. And a boutique runs basically strictly on wholesale. Yes. Like Chaser sells wholesale to boutiques mm -hmm. and they sell the pieces and again that's something that usually has a slim profit margin it's very expensive to do so you'll pay 75 dollars for three sweaters and then it says like msrp per sweater is 
a hundred bucks. So you make twenty five dollars per sweater. And it can be very risky. Very. If you're new, you should not do it. And I would never do would it. Recommend. But unless you like really, really, really know what you're doing. But I feel like those people are very few and far between. Our last one, the final chapter in our dictionary is Y two K. Why? Two K. Y two K is um Think of in the early 2000s and everybody was like, oh, the computers are going to crash. Not that Y2K. Y2K is a style that has very, very, very heavy influences from the early 2000s. Think low rise jeans, teeny little crab tops, very like styles that a couple years ago would be considered very ugly. They are now coming back in full force. Even though when, when people use Y2K in descriptions, it can kind of extend to some like 90s things as yes. well. Mm -hmm. Avoid still like 2010s. No, but Y2K is early 2000s type fashion, yes. kind of like stuff from Mean Girls or... Think um the the show with Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie. Yeah, that what type of that? stuff. That is our reseller. reseller dictionary. Let's close this chapter because we can, like we said, do a part two. If you guys have some suggestions, I'd love to make a second part to this where we actually define some stuff that you guys come up with. Mm -hmm. Our little pea brains can only come up with <laughs> this many. And this is mainly Jack's little pea brain. I came up with like two of these because I am fine. Um, but I'm sure that there are a lot more that we missed. Some mm -hmm. stuff was a little too obvious. Like we didn't want to define Poshmark and define inventory <laughs> I and think stuff. Like that's a pretty, I guarantee. Let us know if you have some suggestions or do you even want to see another part of this? If not, let us know. If so, let us know. And we will see you guys on... Saturday. Saturday. For what? On Saturday. I'm gonna go eat pizza. <laughs> <laughs>